we're in a punk band, so if you play bad, people think it's charming. Ah, no effects, we're so terrible today. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We could be good or bad, so why would you get nervous? I only get nervous about, I care about me having a good time. If I'm not gonna have a good time, that's a bummer. That's the beauty about punk rock is you don't have to be good. You just have to have good songs. Uh, you know what's nice is to uh, still come to Germany and play festivals and still have people really like us. It's crazy. 32 years. Well, I mean, I, I think our songs are good, but I, I think we have a, uh, a r rapport with the crowd. People know that we're not full of shit. It's not an act. Like, and we have a good time. Bands plan out shit. Like, I change our set list every night. And, I put, like, we played a song tonight that we don't know the lyrics to. And our drummer's like, no, we don't even know that song. I'm like, we're doing it. We're fucking doing it. And I, I do not know the lyrics. Well, we just played it. And it was, it was funny. Music's not supposed to be perfect. It, it, and that's the beauty of punk rock. But, like, I, uh, I knew the bass player in Pink at one point, this girl, and she messed up one song. She got fired. You know, like, ah! You're not allowed to mess up? Well, that's no fun. If I had to fire everyone who played a bad note. <laughs> everyone in our band plays a wrong chord at least three or four times. For sure. Who cares? Uh, our one rule is make sure you're in tune. That's really the most important thing. The best advice I can give a band, just make sure you're in tune. If you're not in tune, everything sounds bad. If You can be as sloppy as you want. If you're in tune, you, it's going to sound good at least a little bit but it can never sound good if you're out of tune. Punk rock's been dead since 1973. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, I went to a show last month at a bar, I saw Reagan Youth, and there was about 30 people there, and everyone was drunk, and we all sang songs with the band. Punk rock is, is just how it's always been. You just gotta find it. This one band, Get Dead, I signed them. I, I met them at a bar, the guy had a black eye, and they were just kind of dicks. But we got drunk, I signed them and then I'm producing them in the studio. This is fucking true. They're like, hey, this party. I'm like, my daughter has a recital tomorrow, a piano recital, so I can't party tonight. I go to the bathroom, I come back, I have one more beer. They fucking put uh, MDMA and acid. They dosed me, they fucking dosed me. I own the fucking label. I'm, I'm glad they wouldn't hit me in the head of the baseball bat too. I'm just saying, they fucking dosed me. I told my label, like, let's get rid of them. Let's fucking get them off the label and I called couple of people I know from other labels, like, get rid of the band, and I couldn't do it. It's like, it's so ballsy. They fucking dosed me. It's fucking assholes. You know, people, you know, that, that whole argument, nature versus nurture, the first thing I ever jerked off to was SM. I looked at, my mom had a bunch of porno magazines, Penthouse, Playboy, and I'm like. And then I read a story about submissive man and leather and stuff, and hey! It's, it, it really is like when a gay person realizes they're gay. I did the same thing. It's my sexuality. I don't know why I'm saying this, but my mom, uh, when I was in my teen years, she told me about sex, because my dad was whoever. She said, you know what women really like, Michael? They want you to be really affectionate and fuck them slow and be very gentle. So that's what I thought you were supposed to do. And then I found out, totally wrong. No, you gotta fuck the shit out of a woman. Uh, my mother always told me I was too smart to let to do drugs and fuck up my brain. I don't know, I believed it. So I went to school, went to college, started a label, and after I was successful, uh, I was like, hmm, I think I should start trying drugs now. When the NoFX book comes out, I told both my daughters, I said, when you turn 18, you can never read this book, because they can never, ever read the book. It's crazy. I mean, there's molestation, there's uh, murder, rape, uh, piss drinking, uh, hepatitis, uh, heroin. The early years of no effects were insane. No, our drummer was a junkie for a long time. I never did it. But his stories, what he went through, you know, you know, you know how you score heroin? in LA, how he would score heroin. He knows the dealer, but there's so many cops around. The dealer has heroin in his ear. So he gives him the money, and then he takes it, and then puts it in his mouth, and then w walks away. 
Let's say you buy heroin. Gross. He had four bags and he got pulled over and he was with the girl and he swallowed him and the cop let him go. And he's like, oh, and the girl's like, what? Why are you upset? <laughs> because he had to, this means he can't get his heroin. So he went home, drank coffee and went to his parents' house. And in the morning, he took his mom's colander, you know, the spaghetti thing and shit in it <laughs> and then hosed it off got the four bags, put the colander back in. <laughs> he cleaned it, but still. So our book's pretty good. It's interesting. We wanted a book that is fucking completely our lives. The people in the States, we're a bunch of fucking idiots. We're, we live in a, relig we have a religious state of a bunch of uneducated morons. It's incredible, our country. It's, but. Good food? It's a good place to live, but it's really one of the most fucked up countries. It's crazy. It's a religious country. I mean, you can't win an election here if you say you believe in God. You don't even talk about it. In the US, you have to believe in God. I believe in everything and nothing. I mean, I just don't know. Who cares? All you got is being a good, a decent person, taking care of your friends and neighbors, uh, and live life like it's your last day. Live happy every day. I believe that you don't need a book to tell you what morality is. We have morals. I know, why do I have, I have such a reputation for being an asshole. I'm not, I'm just direct. And I have more fun than everyone else. I mean, like we've been playing for 32 years and people still like us and we don't try very hard. And it's just not fair. Like, like Gaslight Anthem, you know? Yeah, he's a Christian, of course he's nice. What well, he is. Brian's a fucking Christian. He believes in Noah's Ark. Can you imagine somebody believing in Noah's Ark? You know, I have a song where I say, uh, I, like to, I like to believe in evolution. I like theories of evolution and of design. I like them both. Who knows what's going on? I mean, there's definitely more than us. It's just like when people invented, uh, discovered germs. Oh my God, there's germs. There's so much shit we don't know about. But if it doesn't affect you, why even contemplate it? Boring people? If there is some kind of a god or aliens, they don't give a fuck about boring people. You know, if you had an ant farm and there's one ant that's doing all kinds of crazy shit, you're not gonna let that ant die. The boring ant, you don't care if they die. So that's where you're supposed to live a wonderful life and live on the edge, whatever. <laughs>